So in today's video, I'm going to show you an easy way that you can use your MT-1501 to do multiple patches. I'm going to show you how to program the duplicates on the touchscreen of your MT-1501. And I have this order that I have to do. It's for 25 patches. It's Dodgers patches. Um, first, we have to digitize it. And then we have to uh, get the job done. It's 25 patches with all six machines. It shouldn't take that long to do it all. I'm estimating a little bit under an hour and a half to do all, all um, if, if everything goes well, of course. And we all know that everything never goes, like, perfect. But we'll get it done in a reasonable time. So um, this is what the patch looks like when they gave it to me. And um, this is what it looks like after it's digitized. Um, so this one is about, right here, 24,000 stitches and 24,649 stitches to be specific. And we're gonna knock it out real fast. So let's go over to the MT-1501. As a matter of fact, before we get over to the MT-1501, I'm gonna take my 13 by 16 hoop and put two pieces of stabilizer and, and get this uh, ready. So this right here is our 13 by 16 inch Mighty Hoop. And I'm just gonna get some stabilizer and put it on our Mighty Hoop because that's what we're gonna make our patches on. Now typically when I'm doing patches, I use two pieces of cut away stabilizer. All right, so I'm just gonna cut two pieces right here and get it ready. Where's my scissors at? Oh, here they are. All right, so I'm gonna place it under the Mighty Hoop, cut it to size, put this one to the side, and repeat. All right, boom. Place the Mighty Hoop over top of it. Cut it to size, and we got our two pieces of cutaway stabilizer. All right, now I'm gonna lay Mighty Hoop flat on the table, and I'm going to take both of our pieces of stabilizer, place them on top of each other evenly, place them both on top of our Mighty Hoop, right here, grab our Mighty Hoop, and always remember, this side has a U going out, this side has a U going up, it goes into the machine with the U going up, so I'm gonna Place it in there, and we are all hooped up. Two pieces of stabilizer, so it's nice and tough, so the needle won't puncture it at any point when it's doing our multiple patches. So let's go over to the machine and get the machine ready. We're gonna put this inside the machine and get the machine ready. Come on, let's go. Now you're gonna find yourself always having to adjust your machine. There's no way of getting around it, especially when you get multiple jobs of different kinds. You always have to adjust the machine for the new job and the new hoop that you're putting on and then you're going to get another job where you get caps and then you got to adjust the machine again like i said this is the most time consuming part um getting your job set up but you should take your time and get your job set up correctly because once you have it set up correctly everything goes smooth all right so i'm just going to put my hoop in right here all right line it up here we go flip my little socket and lock everything in all right making sure everything is good and locked in and in place so when we start embroidering we won't have any problems any mishaps any uh jump jumping of the hoop or anything like that just take your time and make sure your brackets are in correctly all right now when we have our brackets in correctly we're going to go ahead and set up our design on the touch panel. All right, so let's, let's just cut to setting up the design. If you are in the market to buy a Hoopmaster station or a Hoopmaster of any size, use my Hoopmaster affiliate link down in the description below this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure you guys got a nice shot of the screen and run it down to you in a way to make sense. The first thing you wanna do since you were doing your last embroidery is you wanna make sure your embroidery status is not, it says enter embroidery status, that's entering. When you're in embroidery status, you cannot go search for a file. All right, it won't let you, it won't let you go search for a file. You got it. Please remove embroidery status first. All right, so exit. You got to remove the embroidery status right here. There's a lock, you unlock that, unlock it. Now that little lock is unlocked, you put in your thumb drive right here in the side of the machine. A little slot in the side right here. Let me find that little slot. I don't even have to look. Find that slot right there. Now you go to File, 
and then you just navigate to the thumb drive right here and then you go ahead and navigate to the file that you want and mine is Dodgers 2 I'm going to press Dodgers 2 and I'm going to save it to the machine see how it has the machine right there and it's po the arrow is pointing to the machine that means you're sending this design to the machine this means you're erasing the design right here, the X send it to the machine and it's going to save the file to the actual machine now that it's on the machine I can select it and I can use it so I press the machine right here, which is this thumb drive, this machine, you press the machine, and it's the last file that you save. Go right here, Dodgers 2, press OK, and it loads up the file inside of the machine. All right, that's not it. We have to program colors, we have to select our um, hoop size, so let's continue on. All right, now that we got our machine, our design selected, we're going to go ahead and hit design set so we can select, select our hoop. Press C. Right now we got the cap frame selected. Actually, we got the C hoop selected. We're going to press C, and we're going to select the size that's for our 13 by 16, which is right here. I know where mine is, and it's going to arrange the design inside of that large hoop. All right. See now, I got one little design inside this large hoop that I'm using that we just hooped up with our, our mighty hoop. So now I'm going to go ahead and set how many I want. I want three going across and two going up and down. All right, so right here where it says across, I'm going to hit clear, three, enter. Then I'm going to hit where it says up and down. I want two going up and down. I'm going to hit that, clear, two, enter. All right, right now we're not going to see anything because the designs are sitting on top of each other, so we have to space them out. All right, so right here, um, I think I'm going to do like 125, 0, enter, and then I'm going to do 125, 0, enter, and we'll see what that does, see how, how it spaces it out. Sometimes it's not spaced out perfectly, so you got to go ahead and adjust it again. So this is where we are right now. Doesn't look too bad, but I'm going to bring them in just a little bit so that they're a little closer to each other. So right now I'm going to go... Um, Clear, one, one, five, zero, enter, and clear, one, one, five, zero, 115.0, enter, okay. Let's just bring them a little closer in together. All right, yeah, that brought it in closer together. Now I can escape, and I can position them inside the hoop. Position them inside the hoop, like that. Now they're positioned inside the hoop. I can still bring them closer together if I want to, but I don't feel there's need to. So I'm going to now um, select my colors. All right, select the colors by hitting the thread buttons. And now I'm gonna hit select the colors, all right? So to select the colors, you just go ahead and look at your run sheet and you select the colors that you have going first. I know first I have white, right? Then I have uh, black. After the white, I have black. And then after the black, I have red. I know that. And then after the red, I have blue. And I think that's it. I got to look at my run sheet again. That's what we're missing. We're missing our gray. So after the white, we got gray. And gray is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 on my machine. 10. And then we got our black, which is 2. Then we got our red, which is 3. And then we got our blue, which is four, and that should be it. Yep, that's all the colors. So now we got all our colors programmed right there. Now with only two things left to do, lock it in, put it in embroidery status, do a trace right here to make sure everything fits and it's not going to hit the sides of the hoop. And then we can go ahead and press start, and our machine is ready to go and embroider this design. All right? So, yep, yep, yep. I'm going to go ahead and show y'all the trace one more time since y'all didn't get that when I hit the trace button. So once again, when you hit trace, what you're doing is you're making sure it's on, it always goes to needle number one to do the trace. Let me put that on a light for y'all. It always goes to needle number one to do the trace. So you're making sure needle number one does not hit the sides because when it's embroidering, if it hits the sides, it can mess up your machine. So I'm going to hit the trace button again. And you can see the needle number one is not anywhere near the sides and it's not going to hit the sides and it's going around the whole area 
where all six of those um, things that I made are gonna start embroidering, okay? So now I'm just gonna hit the start button and it's gonna start embroidering the first one. All right. And that's literally it, guys. That is literally it. So you guys know how this goes. I'm just gonna set this up same way I did before and get the other machines going so we can knock this out. Get my stabilizer together. Two pieces, of course, for each hoop. And this time I'm loading up one, two, three, I'm loading up three heads. So, and I have all the uh, 13 by 16 hoops to match. Like I said, if you buy a machine to stay efficient, you gotta calculate you know, your expenses for the hoops also, if you're gonna continue to use your Mighty Hoops and stuff like that, you gotta buy some extra Mighty Hoops so that you can stay efficient with each job. All right, so boom, get this done. And I'm gonna load up the next machine, and so on and so forth. And yeah, we're gonna get this thing going. All right, so we can knock out this order in like a little bit over an hour. Easy money, let's go. All right, so we are all cooking on gas, and as it stands, I got 18 going over here, three on each head, three over, uh, I mean, six on each head, six right here, six right there, and six on the other head. So that's a total of 18, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And then I have another six going over here. So that's my 24, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22, 24. So that's all 24 designs going right here done in no time set it and forget it now once we get done guys i'm going to give you guys a shot of how six of them look all together um so just so you guys can see but i hope this video is I, the point of this video is to show you guys once again demonstrate efficiency and also to show you guys how um to space out your patches so you can have them all done set and like if you got six patches you got three patches you got two patches to do you don't have to go and rehoop stuff that's the purpose of this video i showed you how to set it up in the control panel right there and um i got pretty much all 24 going and once they're going as long as you have your machines tuned properly once they're going they're pretty much done because it's set it and forget it once your machine is running smooth now occasionally you will get a thread break, so don't expect, don't get frustrated. If you get a thread break or two, all that means is you just gotta tune your machine, turn a few knobs and get it to, you know, run smooth. Um, but for the most part, I'm pretty much done this job. I can move on to something else. So guys, there you go, our first one that's done. As much as I'd like to take this off and show it to you guys, done all intricate and nicely. We got work to do, man. I'm trying to get this done, so I'm gonna leave this thing on here embroidering so that this thing can get done. I don't got no time to be playing with y'all. <laughs> I'm sure that you guys can get the idea from what you are seeing on your screen. I mean, it looks really good to me. Got the little small TM going on in there. Man, let me tell y'all something right here, man. This thing is looking good. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But let me talk to you guys for a second real fast. All right, I hope the machines are not too loud and you guys can still hear me, but I figured this will be a better shot with all the machines going at the same time. I think it's pretty cool. But anyway, guys, um, this is the thing. When you are growing your business, there's gonna come a point in time where you're like, now that I have more equipment and it takes me a shorter amount of time, should, there's a moral aspect to it. Should I be charging my customers the same price as I did when I had one machine? You have options. You have options to discount your items a little bit, but I would encourage you to charge the same price because that's the only way that you are going to scale your business. Just because you spent money, hard-earned money, business money on another machine and your workload is cut in half you can offer little discounts here and there but if you want to grow your business if you want to reach the financial goals that you set forth then it's to your benefit to charge the same price and give a break here and there when you can but 
if I only had one machine, this job would easily take me, I don't know, a whole entire day or maybe two to three days to do this 24 piece job. But since I have multiple machines, it's only gonna take me about maybe an hour and a half for the machines to, maybe a little bit more, because it is taking the machine 20 something um, minutes to do each one. And right now we're, we ran out of thread on one of these, but um, even though it's taking the machine time to do it, um, doesn't mean that that warrants giving a discount because I'm trying to grow my business and I'm trying to get more machines so I can save even more time out of thread on that one also. So, you know, so that's in the comments down below. I want you guys to comment your thoughts on, do you think that if you get more machines and you shorten up the time that it takes you to complete a job, do you think that you should be passing on those savings to the customers? <laughs> because what's gonna happen is eventually your items are gonna be super, super, super cheap and you're gonna be charging the same price and people are gonna utilize your services less potentially because it takes them a, a, a longer amount of time before they need to re-up. I'm just reminding my design right here. Starting now, moving forward, if you are in the market to buy a multi-needle embroidery machine, use my Recom affiliate link. As a thank you from me to you, you get a one hour free consultation with me to help you get tuned up. All you gotta do is get your machine, after you get your machine, do your virtual consultation with Recoma, and then email me at awproductions@gmail.com, and we'll set up our one-on-one -on -one consultation, all right? See you there. It's gonna take them a long amount of time before they re-up, and ultimately, the business could be getting that money, because at the end of the day, guess what? You still have to pay back those loans on that machine that you got. You still have to pay for that if you got a loan or something like that. You still have to pay for, uh, for the machine. And if you didn't, even if you didn't take out a loan, if you bought a cash money, you still gotta replace that cash. That still comes out of your business bank account. So I think you should absolutely still be charging the same price because of that reason. It's not my fault I got another machine. I got another machine so that I won't have to work as hard. And people, you always, you know, you always wanna work smarter, not harder. And if you wanna work smarter, not harder, you wanna save time and do the same job so you need to be charging the same price. I wanna know what you guys think about that in the comments down below, and I'm gonna end, end the video on that. Let me know what you guys think. Um, again, I think, uh, I think it's always worth it, it's always nice to offer a discount every now and then, right? And because you know it, it takes you less time to do it and stuff and cut customers a break when they you know, got it like that, when they're in a pinch or something like that and they need stuff done, but ultimately, charge the same price, grow your business, buy even more equipment, and get to the point where, okay, now I'm so huge that I, I can, it doesn't really matter. All my equipment is paid off, the business has no expenses, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a surplus of cash in my business bank account, I'm paying my, myself and my employees a good salary, we rock and roll, we're getting consistent business, now you can start passing the savings and the opportunity and the and thanking your, 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 you know, the people that keep your business running, your customers and stuff like that. Donating your favorite charity. I'm not at that point yet, so we can't do that yet, but I'm just showing you guys as I grow some things that I'm doing to kind of optimize my business and keep on growing. Let me know what you guys think in the comment down below. When you buy new equipment, should you charge less because it takes you less time to do your stuff? Let me know. All right, family, there it is. First six is done, and the other ones are pretty much done. One machine is doing the last one, and the other machine is finishing up uh, on the one to the last, the one before the last, and then it's gonna do the last one. So it's pretty much done, guys. If you like content like this, and you wanna see more, no need to hate, no need to wait. Subscribe now, it's never too late. And don't forget to hit the post notification bell so you can be notified every time I upload new videos like this. See you guys on the next video. It up while I listen to the rest when you're rocking with the best baby.